Smelter Town, a very famous area of El Paso. But since 1882, denizens of Smelter Town have been laid to rest right here in this nearly forgotten cemetery. This is the story of the Smelter Town Cemetery. The American Smelting and Refining Company, also known as a Sarco, would operate a smelter throughout the late 19th and early 20th century in a small community in El Paso known as Smelter Town. It refined hundreds and thousands of tons of copper and lead mined from West Texas and Mexico. Smeltertown would continue to grow throughout the early 20th century. At the foot of Mount Cristo Rey, many people would begin to settle down, constructing new homes, a bakery, butcher shop, YMCA, and multiple schools and churches. At this point in time, Smeltertown was separate from the city of El Paso. It would be divided into two sections. The upper section, which was known as El Alto, is where the smelter managers would live. The lower section, which was known as El Bajo, was where the workers would live. As more people begin to move to Smelter Town, the Asarco Company built the Smelter Town Cemetery. It was unique in that it didn't cost the workers any money in order to be buried there. This was incredibly important to the mostly poor families that were living in Smelter Town, as burials in other parts of El Paso, especially in cemeteries like Concordia, could be incredibly expensive, especially into the 20th century. However, unknown to the residents of Smelter Town, the very thing that was keeping them alive was also slowly killing them. A deadly poison was beginning to spread that would spell the end of the community. This, uh, one of the gentlemen over there, his father was involved in fencing this area. And now his son decided that uh, he needed um, some cleaning up. So he got a group of people, put it on Facebook. That's how I found out about it, on Facebook. So I showed up. Because most everybody here either lived in Smelter Town or up the road in Buena Vista. This cemetery, the land was donated by Asarco for the people of the area. It was donated to the Diocese of El Paso. And there was a church right by the river called uh, San Jose de Cristo Rey del Rio Grande, something like that. And the pastor was the one in charge of uh, the cemetery. But then his father started moving the people, collecting money. To fence the area. Even though some people told him, no, nobody will help you. People came through and the cemetery got fenced. It was a good thing it was needed. Okay, 
you tell me about the history of the cemetery? Well, the only thing I can say is the sign where that says uh, it was started in 1882, I believe it says. And people are buried here from Smelter Town and all along the highway. Even maybe some from uh, downtown El Paso. Because it was mainly for the workers and their families. But workers from all these four plants came from around the city. So there's people here buried for miles around. Do both of you live in Smelter Town? I did, I don't know where she lived. I, my maternal grandparents lived in Smelter Town. And my dad worked at a side How long have you guys been uh, doing the volunteer groundskeeping? That's Willie, he's the one that's charged, in charge. Uh, him and I started last year. Last May. Last May, we originally started it. Last May was when he first asked for help. And him and I were out here almost every day. Lalo would come and help us. One of his, some padres or some of his friends, but mostly it was just us two all last year. And this year I haven't been to that much, but. Looks like you guys have a lot more help now. A little bit more, yeah. A lot more. We just come and show up. We call it volunteers on Saturday morning. And that's it. It's that kind of work that nobody wants to do. But since this guy started, I've known him all my life. Like I said, I saw him on Facebook. I said, sure, I'll go over there. Got nothing else to do on Saturdays. Gives you time to get out of the house because of the virus. This gentleman also volunteers at least today. Okay, well that's another story. Yeah. <laughs> Is there anything else you guys would like to say about the cemetery? We need to clean it up. We need volunteers. I mean, if they can go play golf, why like they can come over and help us? Between the years of 1969 and 1971, over 1,000 tons of lead, 12 tons of cadmium, and 1.5 and tons of arsenic had been released into the atmosphere from the smelter. In March of 1971, CDC officials arrived in order to investigate the lead exposure in Smelter Town. Philip Landergan, a pediatrician, led the CDC team. They wanted to know the effects of lead toxicity on children, which at this point in time, very little was known about. Following the investigation, the city of El Paso attempted to sue Asarco. However, they denied the claims of lead toxicity due to the smelter, and they began to fight back as hard as they could. Eventually, the company would lose the case. They would end up paying $680,000 in fines for over 80 pollution violations. They would also pay the medical expenses for all 134 children that were exposed to lead. After all of this, the company decided to demolish Smelter Town. They would issue out eviction notices in 1972, saying that by January 1st of 1973, all residents were to vacate their homes. Every shop, every church, and every house was demolished. Everything except for the smelter, which would operate for 26 years after the closures. Despite being nearly forgotten, and in a crumbling state, the Smelter Town Cemetery is a very important part of El Paso's history, one that often gets overlooked. 
and now there are many volunteers who spend their time making sure that this piece of history is always remembered. Smelter Town and its cemetery will never be forgotten. Road work ahead. Uh, yeah, I sure hope it does. Uh, <laughs> why has God forsaken me? Oh, uh, that face you just made, that's gonna be the thumbnail. I know it is. Oh, I already know it is. Stupid YouTube algorithm. <laughs>